Let's do some volumes of revolution using washer. In this first example, I've got y is equal to 3 radical x. That's the curve that you see there in white. And y is equal to x. That's the line that you see there in orange. I'm going to take that region and revolve it around the x-axis. Now, it's a little bit hard to draw, so I've got this really great applet. You can see that I've got the same region here. I'm going to go ahead and revolve this around the x-axis. And as I revolve this, I end up with this shape that's rounded on the outside and flat like a cone on the inside. So stacking up disks isn't going to work for us. We need some open space in the middle. So instead, we're going to do this using washers. So you can just barely see that blue washer in there. That blue washer has an open space in the middle and it also has some thickness there. If I go ahead and get rid of my surface, I can show you just what that washer looks like and you can see how the outer edge lines up with the curve, that blue function, and the inner edge lines up with the line, which is y equals x. Let's go ahead and draw this over here. So I've got my curve there. I'm just drawing a mirror image on the other side of my axis of revolution, and I've got that there. And just to make it look circular, I'm gonna go ahead and add this on the top there. So we're gonna be stacking up these washers, and these washers are going to have an opening in the middle, and they're going to be closed then on the outside. This is not the best picture of a washer, so let me also draw it over here so you can get a better view. So my washer looks like this. It is open in the middle, and you can see for this particular rotation, I end up with a thickness in the x direction that's gonna be a dx. That means all of my variables of integration are gonna be an x, so that volume, I'm gonna use my formula, x1 to x2, I wanna take the outer radius squared, that's the full disk, but I'm gonna subtract that negative space in the middle, so minus the smaller the inner radius squared, and this is all gonna be dx. So I need to figure out a couple of things to finish. I need my limits of integration, let's do that first. So so I've got a zero here, I can see that, but I also need to figure out what this number is right here that lines up with that point of intersection. To find what that is, let's go ahead and set our two functions equal to one another. So I've got three radical x is equal to x. I'm going to square both sides to solve this. And I've got 9x is equal to x squared subtracting the 9x, 0 is equal to x squared minus 9x, and I can go ahead and factor out an x, and I get x minus 9. So I get my two limits of integration. 0 we already had, 9 was the other one that we needed, so I've got now 0 to 9. Let's fill these in as we go, so 0 to 9. Next, I need my outer radius. My outer radius is going to go from the middle to the outer edge of my washer. So it's gonna to go to the outer edge of my volume. The outer edge is that curve in white. So my function y equals three radical x is my outer radius. My inner radius is gonna measure just to the inside of that washer. It's really measuring the negative space. It's measuring the empty space. And that goes right up to my line. So y equals x is my inner radius. I can now put these into my formula. So my outer radius squared in terms of x, I'm gonna grab that three radical x squared minus my inner radius, which is x squared dx. I'm not gonna solve this all the way through. I encourage you to, and as you do that, you should get an answer of 243 pi all divided by two. In this one, I'm gonna be revolving around my y-axis. So to come up with an idea of what the shape looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a mirror image on the other side of my axis of revolution. So it's gonna look like this and kind of like that. And then it's going to have a circular shape at the bottom and a circular shape there on top. Okay, not horrible. And we get our washer. So our washer is going to be here 
with an inner opening there, and my thickness then is going to be vertical. So my thickness is going to be a dy. So this time I want everything in terms of y. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna take my curve, which is the y equals x squared. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one in white, and I'm gonna solve it for y. As I solve it for y, I need to take a square root on both sides. So square root of x squared. So x is equal to the square root of y. My other function, the one in orange, is x equals one, and I can go ahead and leave that one as is. We need to figure out a couple of things to put our volume together. So our volume is equal to pi. This is all in terms of y now, so y1 to y2 outer radius squared minus inner radius squared dy. So I want my y1 and my y2, and I also need my radii. I can see that I've got a zero right here as my first y value. My upper y value is gonna line up with my point of intersection there. So to get my second y value, I need to solve for the intersection point between y equals x squared and x equals one. Well, that one's easy. I can go ahead and just plug one in. y is equal to one squared or one, and that gives me my upper limit of integration. Let's fill these in as we go. So our volume is pi, zero to one is my upper, and now I wanna figure out what my radius is, the outer and the inner. The outer radius is gonna go from the axis of revolution out to my orange line. Notice how I'm just working with everything over there in the first quadrant with the original region. So if I'm going just over there to that line, it's a fixed distance all the way along. That fixed distance, this is x equals one here. So that fixed distance right here is equal to one. So this x equals one here is my outer radius. So the inner radius for the empty space is going to get me to my white curve. And that white curve in terms of y is here. So my inner radius is equal to the square root of y. I think I've got everything that we need now. So putting it into our formula, we need our outer radius squared. That's gonna be one, just fixed at one. So one squared minus our inner radius squared. That's the square root of y squared dy. So again, I'm not gonna work this one out, but when you do, you're gonna end up with, this one's really nice to work out. You're gonna end up with a volume there of pi halves. Next, we're gonna revolve around an axis that's not one of our two coordinate axes. For this one, we are revolving around a vertical axis, x equals two. I've already drawn the mirror image on the other side, but as I am working to come up with my radii, I'm gonna be using my original region before I did the mirror image to revolve it. I know that I wanna take my volume, and that's gonna be equal to pi outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. I need that thickness dx or dy. I'm gonna let you figure it out. If you want a hint, you can look at the screen. I'm gonna do my best to put in one of our washers. Well, probably my picture didn't help you at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw it off to the side here. My washers are gonna be stacking up in this direction. If you're ever unsure, you can just draw one right around your axis of revolution. That's gonna get you the right orientation every single time. Clearly, what I've drawn doesn't. So in this case, we've got a dy. So I want everything in terms of y. We're gonna have a dy here, and I also need my upper and lower limits for my integral. Let's go ahead and start with our functions. Uh, let's see, y equals x squared. That's the one in orange here. So let's go ahead and take y equals x squared. I need to solve this one as a function in y. So I'm going to take a square root on both sides. So x is equal to the square root of y. I want it in the first quadrant, so I'm going to keep that non-negative square root. And then I'm going to take my y equals radical x. So y is equal to radical x. I'm solving for x in terms of y. 
and y squared is equal to x. So now I've got both functions represented. We also need our limits of integration in terms of y. I can see that my first one there is zero. The second one is gonna line up with this point of intersection here. So I need to find my second y value, and we're gonna find that by setting our two functions equal. We want a y, so I'm gonna go ahead and set function number one equal to function number two over here in this form. So I'm gonna take the square root of y equals y squared. You might guess that only zero and one work to take a square root and to square the same value, but you can also solve this by squaring both sides. Zero and one, we already had zero. One is the other limit of integration that we needed. Okay, so we've got a lot going on. Let me write what I've got so far. So I've got pi zero to one. Next, I need my outer radius. To get to that outer radius, I'm actually gonna erase some of what I've got here. My outer radius is gonna measure from the axis of revolution to the white curve. I am looking for a distance between these two, the axis and that curve. To find a distance between them, I'm gonna take the rightmost minus the leftmost. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the rightmost minus the leftmost. And as I do that, my rightmost function is my axis of revolution two minus my leftmost, which is my curve there in white, which we're gonna use as y squared, y squared. So this is equal to my outer radius. I'm gonna do the same for my inner radius. My inner radius gets me from the axis of revolution to my orange curve. Our orange curve is over here. It's the square root of y. I need to take the rightmost, which is two. So this is gonna be my smaller r. My rightmost, which is two, and subtract my leftmost, which is the square root of y. And this is my inner. So I'm doing rightmost minus leftmost. If this was oriented differently, it would be upper minus lower. I've got both of my radii now. Let's go ahead and put those into the formula. I need my larger radius, that outer radius, two minus y squared squared, minus the inner radius, two minus radical y squared, and I've got just enough room there for my dy. If you solve this one all the way through, you are gonna end up with 31 pi thirtieths. In the next example, I'm just gonna move this axis of revolution, but keep the same region. So you can see that I've got the same curve here, but I did move my axis of revolution over to x equals negative two. The very first thing that we wanna think about is our thickness or our variable of integration. Are we gonna use dy or dx? A great way to do that is just draw a quick disc around or washer right around your axis of revolution, and that turns out to be a thickness of dy. So I'm gonna put this together, so v is equal to pi. My limits of integration are the same as well because I'm gonna end up with those same two points of intersection, zero and one, as I'm integrating along the y-axis. So I can put those in as well. So zero and one. I need my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared, and that's gonna be dy. I've already rewritten these in terms of y, my two functions. Let's go ahead and just put those back in here. y equals x squared is the orange curve. It got rewritten as x equals the square root of y. And the white curve, y equals radical x, got rewritten as x equals y squared. Let's go ahead and find those radii. So the outer radii is gonna measure, the outer radius measures from the axis of revolution to my orange curve. So you'll see that I've got that distance of two there plus the function value, but I can still take my rightmost curve and subtract my leftmost curve. If I do right minus left, Right minus left, my right curve is gonna be radical y. 
minus my leftmost curve, which is my axis of revolution negative two. So this gives me the square root of y plus two as our outer radius. The inner radius gets me to the other function, that white curve. So to get the second one here, again, right minus left, so my white curve, y squared, minus my axis of revolution to get that distance. So we end up with y squared plus two as our inner radius. I think we've got everything that we need. Go ahead and try and put this together and then you can catch up with me on the screen. Okay, how did you do? I'll bet you did great. If you were to do this one all the way through, you're gonna end up with 49 pi thirtieths. Next up is the volume with cylindrical shells. Take a look at my video here. You guys are doing great. Thanks so much for watching.